that. Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here, Christian helping me out. MMAForSelfDefense.com. I'm going to show you the best thing I've been able to come up with so far to counter the top mounted crucifix, the top crucifix, the beat down position, or the salivary position it's called. Originally, Ivan Salivary did it to Andre Semenov, okay, and then people like Matt Hughes started doing it. I used to train with Hughes, I've trained once with Salivary, and then you've seen John Jones be dominant with it in the UFC. It's really one of the worst positions you can get in, and I've, I've searched the net, I haven't found any escapes to it. This is the best thing I've been able to come up with so far. It's, this is one of the things, just like getting caught in a triangle, or having your back taken, the best defense is don't friggin' get there in the first place, okay? Be aware of where your arms are, even if you're side mounted, trim your elbow in, be loosey goosey with your arm, avoid key locks and kimuras, and, and be conscious of where your arm is. Don't get put there in the position. But what if you're facing a giant like John Jones or a super strong guy like Matt Hughes and you can just grab your wrist and stuff your arm and put you in the position? Here's something you can attempt to do. Okay, so Christian's gonna put me in the mountain crucifix. Okay, the salivary position, the beat down position. DJ Khan calls it a lot of MMA fighters actually call it the beat down position. From here, I gotta try and get this arm back. I gotta try and get the arm back here, guys. This is the problem. So instead of trying to fight here, and you see guys do this, as he's hammering my face, come up with your hammer fist in that. He's gonna be punching me and hammer fisting me, or worse yet, switch to downward elbows, palm on the face, pressure down, downward elbows, okay, what John Jones was doing. When he's there, what you should do is at least give him one good hit to take his mind off of it, a deep systema like hit. Okay, deep to the body. Watch my other videos to see how you hit deep to the body. You're gonna hit deep, grab your own knee, whip your legs up and down to get this arm back to the underhook. See that? I got the arm up. Okay, there's different ways he can be in a, in a career. Here's just a leg staple. This is common. Okay, a lot of times you can just stuff it and get the leg staple position like a guard pass and use the shin to defend it. I'm going to hit deep, deep through the body. You can hear it. Actually, come up, get close on the hit. I'm going to hit it. Wrestle me a second. Okay, see, he doesn't like that. Then I'm going to grab my knee and then I'm going to whip my legs around in a circle back up a little bit. I'm going to bring my knee, grab my knee, whip the legs up to the body and then down and away. Okay, and stretch my arm out. Underhook. That underhook escape out here, you know, UFC can't need the face, need the body. Maybe I'm still fighting one of the super cool organizations in Asia, you can need the head. Or street self defense, need the head. And UFC, need the body. Uppercut, left, down, punch, boom, as he's there on the knees. Look for your strikes and keep your legs back so you don't get a single leg takedown. Okay. Another angle? Uh, yeah, now if you triangles. You know, the worst position really is if he gets a uh, leg triangle on your arm. He's, he's only halfway deep now. It's even worse if he's triangled into the elbow. Okay, same thing. He's going to go up to hit me and stuff. That's going to suck. you got to move fast. Hit him once in the back. Grab your knee. Get this arm up. Other move escape. Get out of there. Bam. Or get back to striking. Alright, let's see. Put me back there. Okay, let's go live a second. He's got me. He goes to hit me. My face starts getting pounded. Hit him. Get it out and go. Okay? I just, I just limped on the wet noodle out of it that time because I felt that I could get out. So learning how to limp arm and wet noodle is very important. Again, try and keep me, try and keep me down. Okay, he's got me here. I'm going to hit him and grab my knee. Go to hit me. Hit him. Good. Move that out. Get out of there. It's not fun, but you hustle, hustle, hustle. Get out. Street, bomb. Okay? So, let's go over it slow one last time, guys, because it's such an important thing. <laughs> Write down some mechanics. Okay, he's got here. He goes to his own head. If he's smart, I can't get my hand out this way to peel his eyes or do anything. I'm going to hit him. Once or twice, grab my own knee, whip up and down here, like you would on certain half guard sweeps. Okay, grab the knee, whip down to get some momentum, try and get that arm out. See, I still got stuck, but if I get it halfway out, I'm still going to hustle to the underhook, the near side underhook. 
really might not work 100%. I'm gonna grab, hit him, hit him, grab and go. Okay. Here, pin it with the shin. Try and hold me down. Got the leg staple on. Okay, you're holding me down, guys. Okay. Go to hit. Go to hit. Go, go, go. So, you'll see sometimes I did it all the way, I grab my leg, sometimes I just grab my leg for a second. I think once I just loosey limped arm out because I felt my elbow had space. So that's how you get out of the celebrate beat down position. I haven't seen anyone else teaching it at all. It's really one of the worst positions now to get caught in an MMA. Because you should be able to punch, punch, punch and then start dropping elbows on the guy and the ref's going to stop it. So, uh, practice this, look to uh, put it in your repertoire. I train it a lot, guys. I'm Dan the Wolfman. Go to MMAForSelfDefense.com. Thanks.